And good afternoon here. I'm here to take another wet cloth and put it on one of your holidays. I mean, holy days with an I in the middle. With an I in the middle. And today we're going to destroy the Christian belief of Valentine's Day. And let it be told before I start this lengthy study that if you would happen to have the guts and the heart to listen to the whole message, it will be presented to you with the facts. And I can't force you to do right. It's up to your own conscience between you and God. But after reading this nonsense and hearing this nonsense, and if you don't turn to God, if you turn off this video at any point and say, oh, he's stupid, he's, he doesn't know what you're talking about, or you offended me, you're still guilty because you are able to hear the whole video. You are able to get the facts of the Bible. So it's also called St. Valentine's Day. Saint, 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 Saint. The holiday has origins in the Roman festival of, and I'm going to mispronounce these names, I'll tell you already. So somebody's going to say, well, I'm not going to listen to it because he can't pronounce the names. Well, let's have you do it. Okay? Send me to my email, jesuschristblessedhope at gmail.com. You on a video uh, saying these names properly. Okay? Festival Leper Kali. Leper, God, leper. It sounds like a, a green festival coming up. Held in mid -fe February. Leper colony, an ancient Roman festival that was conducted annually on February 15th under superintendence of the corporation of priests called Leperci. The corporate or the corporation of priests called Leperci. The origins of the festival are obscure, although the likely derivation of the, its name from lupus, or lupus, Latin, wolf. It may have come from the word L-U-P-U-S. Latin means wolf. Have we not been told in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Gospel, to beware of wolves in sheep clothing? Do Christian, do I need to go any further? Is that enough to say throw Valentine's Day out the window, make the chocolate in, in the stores bankrupt? The priest name comes from the Latin word means wolf. I wish I had a red flag. I'd be waving it right now. And various suggested connection with an ancient deity, that's a god, small g o d, who protected herds. From wolves with a legendary she-wolf. Well, I'm glad they're up to date with the modern woman movement here. The only one that protects the herds is the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 10. As a fertility rate, you mean you, you, you get a man and a woman together. Sexual. Sexual. The festival is also associated with the god Faunus. Small g-o-d. Christians, you can throw this out of the garbage right now. It should be just enough to say we're involved in Romans, we're involved in priests, we're involved in festivals, we're involved in fertility, and we're involved in small G-O-D. Is it not enough to say, God, I want to turn to you and do right? Why not buy your spouse chocolate and candies all year round? Why in that moment, why don't you give your, your, your wife a heart attack, come home with this chocolate any time of year and say, this is because I love you. You may have to call 911. Faustus, an ancient Italian <laughs> rural deity, that means God, small g-o-d-s, whose attributes in classic Rome times were identified with those of the Greek god, small g-o-d, Pan. We're not going to study Pan, but Pan's a whole nother worship, a whole nother study. Faustus was originally worshipped throughout the countryside as a bestower of fruitfulness of on fields and flocks you mean when the pollen and animals get together you do know what pollen is don't, don't you and you do know how to make other flocks he evidently became primary a woodland deity uh druids 
the sounds of the forest being regarded as his voice. <laughs> That's me laughing. That wasn't the sound of the forest. Each leprechaun began with a sacrifice by the leprechaun, the priest, of goats and a dog. Dogs are unclean in the Bible. Goats were offered in the Levitical priesthood. After which two of the leprechaun, the priests, were led to the altar. All eyes closed. Please, please come to the altar. We'll play a hymn. Though their foreheads were touched with a bloody knife. My bloody Valentine's. Is there are a lot of horror movies about Valentine's Day and murder and and the blood was wiped off with a wool dipped in milk. You do know where milk comes from, don't you? Well, let's look at the female. You do know where the milk comes from, don't you? Wool. You do know that uh, that masons are buried in sheepskin. I mean, you do know where wool comes from, I hope. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I hate to bring Bible into this, but... The ritual required that the two young men laugh. <laughs> I'm laughing. The sacrifice feast followed. So after our after our, 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 our service, we'll have a fellowship meal to follow. <laughs> oh, I love this. After which, the leprechaun, that's the priest, cut thongs from the skins of the sacrificial animals. That's gross. And ran into two bands around the Palatine Hill. Striking with the throngs. <laughs> this is a church down the road says we're going to have a Valentine concert. Another church says we're going to have a lottery. Right here in Daytona Beach. And we'll get to that in a moment. You didn't think that was in here, did you? All right. Striking with the throngs any woman who came near them. You smack him in the you smack him with a, an animal thong. Oh, that's romantic, dear. A blow from the throng was supposed to render a woman fertile. <laughs> oh, I don't need to have the festival to start laughing. I'll just continue laughing now. In 494, the Christian church, no, that's the Catholic Church. They ain't nothing Christian. They killed Christians. Check Fox's Book of Martyrs, pages 1 to the end. Uh, under Pope Gilelius I, appropriated the form of the rite as the festival of purification. With a dead animal's skins made into a thong, it purifies. And yet they say Mary had no sin and she went to the temple with the pigeons because she held the Lamb of God in her arms. For what? For purification of her sin. All right. The Roman romantics. Ah, oh, This is still this festival we're talking about. The Roman romantics were drunk. <laughs> Sound like Americans. They were naked. <laughs> Says Noel Lenski, a historian of the University of Colorado at Border, uh, Boulder. Young men would actually line up for the men to hit them. Lenski said, they believe this would make them fertile. Woohoo. Strange people, the Romans. And then you have a Roman church built upon this nonsense. And you allow the Roman church to bring this nonsense into your Baptist church. You need to tell your pastor, he needs to do a little more history behind that pulpit. He needs to explain what's going on instead of fairy tale and love stories in the gospel, in the gospel, in the gospel. To a bunch of saved Christians that need to grow on milk. To fool me. The brutal feat included a matchmaking lottery. There's a church right down the road down here. Let's see, that's north. That would be northeast. That's advertising on their sign as a Roman church, a lottery. I think it's Ridgewood. I get Ridgewood and over mixed up. How about that? A brutal included matchmaking lottery. How would American woman, how would you like to have your mate be designed for you by number four? You got the lucky number four? All right, here's your woman. 
I think there was a movie Groundhog Day where they were lottery and doing money for a woman, weren't they? For for a date. How did they sneak that into the movie? In which a young man drew the names of women from a jar. The couple would then be um coupled and this is what the guy wrote. Um I like that um I can fill some things in that um. I hope they were married for um they were not married if he just drew her name out of the jar. Um how about adultery or fornication? I wouldn't even think it said the men line up. And I'm maybe assuming the Roman Roman people were. What if that man was already married? <laughs> um <laughs> I loved it. Coupled up for the duration of the festival or longer. If the match was right. Match, you mean pot, fire. Okay. The festival which celebrated the coming of spring. Not yet spring, but you know, that's Easter. Including fertility rites. And the pairing off women with men by lottery, like I already said. At the end of the 5th century, Pope Galilius I replaced Leprechaun with St. Valentine's Day. Bingo! There it is! A Pope changed the name to a festival of lottery and killing animals and smacking the women and their fertility and the men get hit, their fertility and all this nonsense and a pope changed the name and here it is 2019 and it's in the Baptist churches. Where does St. Valentine's Day come from? From Pope Gallius one. I'll just stop right here and you ought to say, Lord God, I'm getting my knees right now where I am. If I got to pull the car over, I'm going to get right with you, Lord. But you won't. You know why? I like it. I like it. You're mean. That's not what Jesus would do. Paul stood on, the, on Mars Hill and said, you worship ignorantly a God you don't even know. It came to be celebrated as a day of romance from the 14th century. The church down here is having those same lotteries on Valentine's Day. You want me to go take a picture? I'll put the picture up. Probably against the law and copyright laws and other nonsense. Or I would. Every February 14th across the United States and other places around the world, candy, flowers, and gifts are exchanged between loved ones. All the name of St. Valentine. Not me. I give my, my wife, my spouse, and my, I give them all year round. So, the Catholic Church recognizes at least three different saints named Valentine or Valentinus, all of whom were martyred, probably by their own. One legend contends that the Valentine was a priest. Oh! Oh! Mm. who served during the 3rd century in Rome. Christian. All right, yeah, I'm getting aggravated, I get angry, because Christians go in for this nonsense. You make me mad, angry because you will not serve the Lord. You will not turn to the Bible and do right. The Bible says be angry and sin not. This ought to be right now, t two pages, I think there's seven. You ought to be right now saying, hey, I ain't doing that no more. Rome. When Emperor Claudius II decided that single men made better soldiers than those with wives and families, he outlawed marriage for young men. Is there not a passage in Timothy that says they will forbid men from marrying? Is that not scripture? Valentine, realizing the injustice of the decree, defiled... Uh, defied Claudius and continued to perform marriages for young lovers in secret. Elope. Elope. When Valentine's actions were dis discovered, Claudius ordered that he be put to death. That's a typical Catholic move. Killed martyrdom. Now that's, that's a legend. You know what a legend is? Webster's 1828. Ready? Drum roll. An idle or ridiculous story told representing saints. That's not me, friend. That's Noel Webster, 1828, said that in legend, an idle or ridiculous story told 
respecting saints. You would think I wrote that. I didn't. All right. Other stories suggest that Valentine may have been killed for attempting to help Christians escape harsh Roman prisons. I don't. Where they were often beaten and tortured. I believe that part. Oh, yeah. Could be. According to one legend, an idle or ridiculous story told rep respecting saints was in prison, Valentine actually sent the first Valentine greeting himself after he fell in love with a young girl, possibly his jailer's daughter, who visited him during his confinement. Before his death, it is alleged, alleged, the Bible is true. This is alleged. This is legend. Allege, where was I? That he wrote her a letter signed from your Valentine. An expression that is still used today. All right, from your Valentine, it's a ledge. It's a legend. It's, we don't know. How about something that is true and dear and going all the world and preach the gospel? That's not a legend. That's not supposed. How about a Bible, King James Bible, that has the red letters, the words of Christ? Although the truth behind Valentine legends, an idle or ridiculous story told respecting saints, is murky, the Bible's not murky, the stories are emphasized his appeal as a synthetic, heroic, and most important romantic figure. How about the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? By the Middle Ages, perhaps thanks to this repetition, Valentine would have become one of the most popular saints in England and France. You mean England that's dominated by Muslims today? By a queen who, who anything but Christian. You look at that nation today, you will never think that the King James Bible came out of it. February 14th, sweethearts. Of all ages will exchange cards, flowers, candy, and more lavish gifts in the name of Saint Valentine. You know what they you know what I, I, I saw one time it was a program and it was talking about dumps, city dumps. You know a class of archaeologists, they go into the dumps and they do practice in the dump. You know what they found more in those dumps? Valentine's candy. Unwrapped. In the city dumps, if I remember that that program correctly. You meant still wrapped up. Still wrapped up. Though no one has pinpointed the exact origin of the holiday with an eye in the middle, one good place to start is ancient Rome. Mine starts upon a, 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 a manger in Bethlehem and, and ends at the empty tomb. Where Christ came down from the throne, not Rome. As the years went on, the holiday grew sweeter. Consular and Shakespeare romanticized it in their work, and it gained popularity through Britain and the rest of Europe. Handmade paper cards became token de jure of the Middle Ages. So these cards came out around the time of Shakespeare. The other English writer that no one says that Shakespeare is I, I, iconic. The Shakespeare, we ought to change Shakespeare because, uh, you know, it's hard to read. Shakespeare is so archaic. No, you don't say that. You say that about the Bible. Evidentially, the tradition made its way to the new world. The industrial, uh, excuse me, industrial revolution ushered in factory-made cards in the 19th century. And in 1913, Hallmark cards of Kansas City, Missouri, began mass, mass, mass producing Valentines. February has not been the same since. Today, the holiday is big business. According to the market research of IBIS World, Valentine's sales reached 17.6 billion on 2011. And in 2012, the sales are expected to total 18.6 billion. It turns out nobody really, nobody knows the true history of Valentine's Day. 
but it is Roman source. We got that down. All right, what about little Cupid? That little fat guy. Let's talk about him. If you mention Cupid to just about anybody, they will tell you he is a god of love. But how much do we really know the fact of him? In Latin, that's the official language of the church in Rome, Cupid goes by two names that have different origins. One of Cupid's Roman names is Capidio. Capudio. Capidio. This form means desire. If we stop to think about it, regardless of our age, the people we love deeply are ones we enjoy and desire to be with, says the writer. Cupid's other Latin name is Amor, which means love. Amore. Only really Italian I know besides Buschetti. Two of the major planets. Babylonians were planet seekers. Egyptians were planet seekers in the Bible. And our solar system bear the names of Cupid's mother, Venus, and his father, Mars. So Cupid is the product of two planets, two gods, small g o d f. Although Cupid is never seen, when the weather conditions are exactly right, both of these planets can be seen in the sky after dark. No light. When you have no light, it's dark. My light is Jesus Christ. In Greek mythology, Cupid is known as Eros, who was portrayed as a slender young boy with wings. However, following the Hellenistic, means Greek, age that ended about 31 BC when Rome conquered Greece, he was portrayed as a chubby little boy, probably too much candy, I don't know. We all are most familiar, especially around Valentine's Day. So, Cupid always had a bow. You know who the first man in the Bible had a bow? You, come on, you do know in the book of Genesis. He was a great hunter. You do know. Nimrod. Mighty hunter. Mighty one in the earth. The Bible records. You know Esau was a hunter with a bow? Cupid, oh, you know Saul was hit with a bow? Didn't kill him, but he was hit with a bow. You know, there was another king that, that they shot the bow and got right between the harness. Cupid always had a bow and arrow, which he used to shoot the power of love wherever he wanted it to go. So early artists pictured Cupid as being blindfolded. You mean like Lady Justice? According to Shakespeare, the reason was because he, because as a chubby little boy, Cupid often changed his feelings about things, especially those having to do with love. If you, again, okay, um, I just reprint. Accidental printing. Okay. So who is Cupid? In Latin, uh, we got a double page here. Hold on. All right, they printed two pages the same. I uh, apologize for that. Okay, page, I don't know now. It says five. All right, so, although Cupid is portrayed with a bow and arrow, most people don't know that he actually has two arrows. Or perhaps one arrow with two very different tips. If he fired a gold one, that's important, gold, which had a very sharp tip. The female heart, where it, land, where it landed, would immediately fall in love with the desire to be with a certain male forever. If you got shot in a heart with an arrow, you ain't going to fall in love. You're going to fall into the emergency room, dead in a morgue. Somebody go around shooting you with an arrow, he's a murderer. 
And the Bible says a murderer must be put to death. This guy, Cupid says, I'm going to hit that woman with an arrow. He has in his mind to shoot an arrow. He has just declared, he has put forth, I'm going to shoot this arrow. I'm going to shoot it in her heart, which causes death. He's a murderer. He needs to be put to death. But we don't put murderers to death in, in America today. No, 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 no. We keep them housed. So, the gold one, which was very sharp tipped, the female heart, where it landed, was immediately filled with love and desire to be with a certain male forever. Shakespeare's work, look how they keep quoting Shakespeare. Later on, I'm going to quote from the Bible. Shakespeare's words about Cupid's changing his mind applied to the blindfold Cupid. His use of a blunt tipped lead arrow. Whether male or female, when the lead tip struck a heart, the message was that one person in the relationship wanted to end it and be free from the person forever so another relationship could be started. Oh, boy. Cuba's shooting that lead arrow all around America in Hollywood. So gold means passion. Lead means I don't want you. You do read about lead. Uh, it's in one of the prophets about uh, the talent of lead and the stork women that had wings that went over the land of China. You, I forget which book that's in. Should have looked that up. I apologize. All right. So uh, this is important. He is often portrayed as the son of the love goddess Venus and the war god of Mars. Well, how did you get war and love together? <gasps> Hippie movement. Make love, not war. When you say that, you're talking about Eros, Cupid's mother and father. Isn't that interesting? Wow. During this time, the icon acquired the bow and arrow that represented his source of power. Death. A person or even a deity, God, small g-o-d-s, who is shot by Cupid's arrow should be dead. It's filled with uncontrolled desire. You mean coveting and lust. I'm just bringing this up to you. Cupid is winged. Allegedly because lovers are unreliable, unreliable and likely to change their minds. Okay. Okay. And boyish because love is irrational. Whatever. His symbols are the, the arrow and torch. Because love wounds and flames the heart. Or a pizza too late at night. Or uh, peppers. <laughs> Cupid carries two kinds of arrows again or darts. One of them the sharp golden point. Or the other was a blunt tip of lead. The person wounded by the golden arrow, wounded, you'd be dead. <laughs> it's filled with uncontrolled desire, sex, love, des you know. But the one struck with lead feels, you know, distaste and desires only to flee. To adapt myths for Christian use, medieval mythographers interpreted them nor morally. In this view, Cupid might be seen as the demon that's what they say. Demon of fornication. Oh, Christian, you got to sign up for this. To make it Christian, they made Eros, Cupid, the demon of fornication. Well, we're getting a little closer. All right. The chocolate and candies. Oh, uh, can we all say diabetes? Can we say that that woman that's so slender, you know, grow in the midsection? If you get a box of chocolates this Valentine's Day, thank Richard Cadbury. After, no, you're supposed to thank your, the spouse that gave it to you. After he and his brother took over the family's chocolate manufacturing business, he discovered a way to extract pure cocoa butter from whole beans and add it to the company's chocolate drink. This process produced more cocoa butter than expected. So he put it in eating chocolates as well. Then in a business ploy that would change the industry, 
Get my next paper here. Cadbury started designing beautiful boxes for his new chocolates, including, you've seen those boxes, you know, including special Valentine's Day ones with Cupid's, you know, that guy going around shooting everybody, and roses. So the guy's going to shoot you in the heart with an arrow, and then you're going to prick your finger with a thorn. Oh, yeah. It sounds bloody to me. Oh, wait a minute. Bloody? You mean, wait a minute. Bloody? I'm sorry. Did I say something over here? Uh, where was it? The leprechaun? Wasn't that blood? They, they would touch the forehead with a bloody knife, and the blood was wiped off with, with a wool. And then they make the thongs out of the animal skins and they go smacking people with them. Yo, things haven't changed, have they? Where was that? Thorn. It's believed that he made the first heart-shaped candy box, even though he did not patent it. So let's look at the heart shape on Valentine's Day, shall we? By the way, today is February 14th. What's that mean? It's February 14th. Today. The heart shape is a universal symbol of romantic love. It can be seen all around us, but mostly as a heart emoticon on social networks today. People send millions of digital hearts over the web every day to express their admiration to someone or something. The heart shape by modern definition is, is used to express the idea of the heart in its metaphorical or symbolic sense as a core of emotion, affection, and love. It refers mostly by not only to romantic love. Here, take my heart. Now I'm dead. And it's even more deader if this old guy goes around shooting it with arrows, I guess. In this, we'll get into all that. In the 6th to 5th century BC, the heart shape was used to represent the heart-shaped fruit of the plant Silphium, S I L P H I U M, a plant possibly used as a contraceptive. Whoa, boy, this is sex. Close your eyes, rated R. Don't they have in, in schools? They used to when I was in school. You give out candy and little hearts to all the kids in the classroom. Many species in this parsley family have estrogenic properties and some such as a wild carrot for rabbits ah! we're getting very close to s star aren't we <laughs> we use to induce abortion oh oh i mean you pro-lifers out there getting into the heart <laughs> oh you fools a professor of psychology who studied the symbolism, origin, and history of Valentine's Day, said the traditional double-looped heart symbol on candy and cards is inspired by the shape of the female buttocks as they peer from behind. Take a close look. Here we go. And his name is, uh, got his name here, Professor Gadiano Prazerone of Rona College, Salem, Virginia. Let me spell his name, please. G-A-L-D-I-N-O P-R-A-N-Z-A-R-O-N-E He says the heart looks like a woman's butt when she sits down. Take a look. Okay. So here we go. The fact that the symbol, the heart, doesn't resemble the human organ is one fairly glaring piece of evidence. That heart you draw does not look like your heart. No way, no shape, no form. Put that in the evidence of a proper courtroom. The judge would have to rule it out because it don't look like the human heart. It is never, your heart is never bright red in color. Oh! And the shape does not have the invagination that's that little hump at the top at the top nor the sharp point at the base our heart does not look like that heart our heart does not have the redness of that heart wait till you get to this one this is interesting ancient Romans and greeks 
may have started the link between the heart symbol and the female adamini. adamini. The Greeks associate beauty with the female behind curves. The, the, the Greeks like the curves of women. The Greek goddess of beauty, Aphrodite, was beautiful all over, but was unique in that her buttocks were especially beautiful. Her shapely round hemispheres, her buttocks, were so appreciated by the Greeks that they built a special temple, Aphrodite Kalakidavis, which literally means goddess with beautiful buttocks. I wonder where that heart symbol came from. Aphrodite sitting down. I like what he now. This is what this this is not me. This is what the guy wrote. This was probably the only religious building in the world that was dedicated to buttock worship. That's Professor Gadano, and I apologize, sir. Pranzazone of Roanoke College in Salem, Virginia. I didn't say that. That heart symbol is a worship of the imagery of the woman's butt. But you will say, I like it. Sick perversion. Christian in the Bible. Oh, you knew I was going to get this. All right, ready? Number one. Roman and Greek gods, small G-O-D-S. How's that? How's that? Acts 19.26, moreover, ye see in here that not alone in Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and churned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Paul was against those gods. Man, Paul rebuked the modern church today. 1 Corinthians 8, 5 and 6. For through there be that are called gods, small g-o-d-s, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many. You realize all the planets in our solar system but earth is named for gods? Venus, well that's Hera's mother. Mercury. Mars, Saturn, Uranus, they're named for gods. Orion, whether they be in heaven or earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things, and we in him, the one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Galatians 4 8. How be it then? When ye knew not God, you did service unto them by nature are no gods. I'm going to tell you scripture with Valentine's Day, with the fact is with Roman and Greek gods, Venus, Mars, Eros, you have no business. And when this is based upon a priest function, and when the Pope has changed that function, the name of, I don't know how to say it wrong, Lupercale, onto St. Valentine's Day, it has an AKA also known as. As far as we know, there's probably no Valentine. Uh. Verse Galatians 4 a how be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Genesis 35, 2. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. Ooh. What would you say about that about Valentine's Day? If you're not married, take off that lingerie and put some real clothes on. People be walking around with those little dazzling hearts sticking out of their head, bouncing around. You look like an idiot. 
Well, no matter what holiday, you put that thing in your hand and they're bouncing around, you look like an idiot, you know? I got, here I go. I got to say this word once a day. You look stupid. Thank you. You made me use the word stupid today. Genesis 35, 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods, which were in their hand, and all their earrings, which they had in their ears. And Jacob hid under the oak, which was by Shechem. Remember I told you that when they found in the city dumps much Valentine stuff? <laughs> Jacob says, give me all those gods. We're burying it. Exodus 15, 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Jehovah, among the gods, small G-O-D-S. Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders, while the church today is representing in Roman and Greek and Catholic priestdom. Oh, the name of Valentine's Day. Of course. I like it. Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And you find that in the Pauline doctrine, too. Saint Valentine. Eros. There are gods. Small G-O-D-S. Exodus 20, 23. Ye shall not make, ye, ye shall not make with me gods, small G-O-D-S, of silver, Neither shall thou make unto you gods, small g-o-d-s, of gold. Was it one of them arrows gold? The love gold arrow. Exodus twenty-two twenty-eight. 28. Thou shalt not revile the gods, small g-o-d-s, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Huh, that's a whole different other subject there. Adultery and fornication on Valentine's Day. How many lovers today are going to get together that should not get together? Now, legend. The Bible's real, isn't it? So let's stick to what God has to say and not God, small geodia. How about the word of God over the legend of men? I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to read to you again. I'm going to close with this. If I can find it. It's in here somewhere. Is that the man studying the Bible? Okay, remember? Let's go to the Word of God more than the Word of Man. Legend. Webster's 1828. Number two. The idol... Excuse me, an idle or ridiculous story told res respecting saints. Now, based upon all that, based upon where the foundation is, based upon what has happened, what has concluded, what has brought us to a day called Valentine's Day, my advice to use the chuck it. It has no origins in the Bible. Now, it's up to you. I'm not going to force nobody, but if you're not listening to this video no more, you're still liable because you could have listened to it all. You could have downloaded it. You could have uh, put it as favor. You could have liked it for later. You too have the button that uh, you can watch later. And if you've watched this thing all the way through and you have desired to say, I'm going to keep my, I like it. I'm going to keep my Valentine's Day. You stay with a small G-O-D-S. And one day you'll stand before the big G-O-D. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Everything about this holiday is evil. Lies.